It began with an incredible resemblance, a remarkable coincidence. It's my mother. It's my mother, too. An extraordinary discovery. Golly, sisters. And now, Susan and Sharon, two twins separated since they were babies, have an ingenious plan to get their parents back together. Switch? We could do it. It's double the trouble and three times the last when Haley Mills and Haley Mills team up to spring the parent trap. Surprise! Exclusively on the Disney Channel. We watched The Parent Trap, and I liked it. I watched The Parent Trap. You saw it for the first time. Yeah. And? And I liked it. Did you cry? No, I, I got a little emotional because I thought about the father who never saw his daughter for so many years. And I'm like, how could he go for like 12 years without seeing his daughter? Mm-hmm. He had to like suppress a lot of stuff because he was kind of like a hard man. Mm-hmm. But the wife, on the other hand, was kind of pig-headed too. It seemed like. He slept through the very, very end. You did. I kept. I saw. Well, <laughs> once, once the mean woman slapped the girl, I was like, I was like, I, this is over. They know the resolution. Did the parents get back together? Yes. Well, they don't. Tech. They do, but they didn't technically. She had the one girl wakes up and she had a dream, and she's telling her sister about the dream, and she says there was a wedding, and, was, and everybody's in the dream. Yeah. And their parents are getting remarried. I was poking my baby. Waking so did up. they get remarried? What do you hinted. call it? It's hinted at, yeah. I bet they had a tempestuous love of her. Because if you fight that much... You missed the end where she was telling... He was telling her all the things he missed oh. about her because she was cooking him dinner. Yeah. Because the girls went up to bed. Yeah. And she was finishing dinner and he, she was like, well, where's Vicky? You know, and he had to tell her. And he was like, she was too young for me anyways and this, that, and the other. And he says, you know what I miss? And she says, what? And he tells her all the things he missed about her. And they start kissing. And she's like, I've waited for so long. And I missed you so much. Baby would have bawled. Do you think that maybe gave a lot of kids the wrong idea when their parents got divorced for years? (laughs) They were going to get back together. Yeah, like they could parent trap them into it. Yeah. My parents, my mom's mom and dad married twice. Really? Mm -hmm. I told you this. No. Yes. Did they stay together the second time? No. <laughs> no. They weren't like, uh, Ro- well, uh, you could say Robert Wagner and his wife didn't really stay together either. She died. She mysteriously died. First time divorced, second time widow. No, because my Aunt Becky yeah. was from their first marriage. Uh-huh. And then my mom, Aunt Judy, and Uncle John are from the second marriage. Uh, how long Same were they parents. apart? Were they married to anybody else in the interim? No. They never married anybody. Did they stay friends or talk or anything? Not really. I don't huh. think. They They were still together when my mom graduated high school. Mm-hmm. But I think it kind of just... I don't think they got divorced the second time. I just don't... I think they stopped living together. Because hmm. my grandma moved. To, to be like a jet setter. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And your, fa- your grandfather. Mm-hmm. Did he die before you were born? He died like the year after I was born, but I never met him. Oh, you never met him. Mm-hmm. Hmm. He wasn't a nice man, my mom said. Hmm. But she still said that I never met him. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. So what do you give it the parent trap? An A. I give it a B. Let's get together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why I don't discover- Hoss and I come by? <laughs> I discovered that some of my friends who might listen to the podcast. Again, you think you're all metal and all this stuff, and then you got Haas over here like in the parent trap. What's wrong with that? It's called Cuddle Metal. It is it? Yeah. Are you feeling you feel- that thing? Yeah, what is that? Where is it? Here? Yeah, what is that? I think it's just a, um, I don't know, part of the sofa. Oh, okay. It's not it's like not, broken? No. Okay. Nothing's moving. So Cuddle, I think it's just where so the cuddle, cuddle Metal. Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Think about it. Zach does funny voices. Yeah. You're a sweetheart. <laughs> and Haas loves kids' movies. <laughs> and about Gabe. Gabe makes t shirts and has a son of his own, so he's a sweetheart too. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Y'all are snuggly. Yeah. We all collect t shirts. Yes. 
you collect t-shirts. You would think, you know, when you see these scary metal bands and stuff, oh, they worship the devil and they kill oh, birds. Oh, do. And oh, you don't kill birds. They kill, you know. Today I was they getting... They draw pentagrams and stuff like that. No, that. not my baby. We he draws that. cartoons. <laughs> Today I was uh, getting my frozen yogurt. Your fro yo, because yeah. you're metal. No, it was just a listen, please. It was a frozen... This is the most metal of frozen yogurts. I'm the one hanging out in Youngstown and Newcastle today. I'm the metal listen, one. Listen, listen <laughs> how metal this is. What? It's frozen simply lemonade mixed with vanilla yogurt. You're cuddly Martha Stewart metal. It's really good. <laughs> anyway, so I was in a bad mood. Yeah. And, I, and Jeff was telling me. That tends me, to happen every time you go to work. Jeff was telling me about <laughs> someone, and I said, honestly, I've met a lot of stupid people in my life. Most of my friends are pro wrestlers. She's the dumbest person I've ever met in my entire life. So just imagine. So the lady looks at me and she's like, she goes, the lady behind the counter goes, later on, did you see that video of the uh, guy saving the dog from the car in New Orleans? Or no, uh, Baton Rouge? Yet. So in Baton Rouge, all these cars are getting pulled under the water. Because of the flooding. Yeah, and they, they had a convertible top on the car. So mm-hmm. the guy literally pulled a knife out and cut through it. And he to pulled the dog out. And we pulled the lady out. She, she was like drowning. She's like, my dog, my dog. So he swam back underneath and swam into the car and came out with this little white dog. Oh! And the little dog was like dog paddling. I and he, he got him out. And uh, the uh, I said to Jeff, I said, like, you know what? That makes me, I could watch dogs be rescued all day. I said, I wish they'd rescue every dog and just let humans die. And the lady behind the counter looked at me like this. She just went. No, wait. I have. Um, no, it's not. You're talking about cute dogs. Yeah. I have a new kitten for you. Uh huh. Have you heard? Is of that what you? Is that what I cut you off? Is that what you were going to tell me? No, about? but that's remind me. Have okay. you heard of Triumphant Tegan? <laughs> no. Just you wait. I'm going to play this video, and I want your reaction. She can't use her back legs. Look at how she climbs the pole, baby. Wow. So- and she has to wear um diapers. Yeah. Because she, the way her body's built, yeah. she has accidents all the time. But, baby, look at her. She just pulls herself around. So what's her, so if people want to see it, she's what, at triumphant underscore Tegan. I can't even handle it. So on, we'll play this on the. She's my baby doll. So what was the other thing you were going to tell me? And she, when they give her baths, she has to wear a life vest because she can't swim. <laughs> Doesn't let me just break your heart. Yes. I was listening to, you know, my crime shows today. Did you know a wrestler named, he was killed in a fight outside of a car in California, like 70s. He was almost an Olympic wrestler, but also did like local stuff. His name was Dusty something. Dusty Wolf? No. Dusty, he was from San Diego. Look up Cold Case Files. Or no, I'm sorry. Forensic Files, Dusty, something. Forensic Files. Dusty. Dusty. Wrestler. Just look up that. Dusty. Wrestler. Because that was his name. San Diego. It was older than that. Harless. Yeah. Hmm. I think that was his name. Yeah. Maybe it was in yeah, the nineties. Yeah, David Gensler. Hmm. He was a wrestler. I never and heard that's that. what it was a he cat called his girlfriend from his car, this guy. Yeah. And they were walking down the street and he tried saying that he stabbed him in self defense and it wasn't they figured mm. out by the way their shirts lined up with the blood mm-hmm. that um he murdered him. Okay, we're gonna watch. I was listening to it and it was wrestling. I thought you'd want. My wife said, You never edit any of these shows out. And I said, I edit a lot out. Yeah. Yeah. What parts do you edit out? Well, I can't instance? tell if I can't talk about them because then people will know what they're doing or not. But I want what part? To I want to know. As Name well. me one little part. Uh, sometimes I talk about stuff about work and I'm like, I could probably get fired for saying that. Oh. Like so. this that you're saying right now, you should probably edit out. <laughs> no, because then people don't know because it's already edited up, and then people wonder, what did he say? If I say something, sometimes I'll hear me talk about wrestling or bands, and I'm like, oh, it sounds like I'm bragging too much, and I just edit that out, too. So you do it as a superficial 
superficial. Like a not as superficial. It's just I don't want the show to come <laughs> off as e- e- too egotistical. And then other times, like a lot of times, I'll say, "My baby's a learned man. He should share that." But sometimes when I say something like, "And that's cool," you and that's like a douche. And no, I don't say, <laughs> and I go, "That's cool, right?" And then you go, "Uh, yeah." I'm like, isn't that interesting? And you go, uh. Eh. Oh, so, so it's I, my fault. No, it's my fault because I say, and that's interesting. Wow, this is interesting. This is interesting. And I used to say the same thing over and over again. My poor wife. I listen to that show and I'm like, how does my wife stay with me when I listen to the shows? I like the part in the one I listened to today where you were saying you were going to beep stuff. Yeah. And it was when I was telling you you had a booger on your glasses. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> and you said, I'm going to go beep on my glasses. <laughs> I'm going to go. So, that was The Parent Trap. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. It was great. It was a fun Disney movie. We have The Parent Trap 2 to watch. Mm-hmm. Which you, is not as good. Parent Trap 3 and 4, you got to go to I Offer to get. Yes, which we will be. Who goes to I Offer and spends money on a lot of movies? They're who not would, on Second Spin? Who would do, no, they're not on SecondSpin.com. A fine site them. that if you start ordering from will send you realizes that you're a movie addict and says, you know, I know you just bought 35 movies that you mm-hmm. haven't even logged into your database yet, mm-hmm. but we got 30% off. And wouldn't you like, wouldn't you like to have some, uh, the whip in the body or perhaps, uh, some other Mario Baba movies for 30% off? Cause we got them. In fact, you enter in the movies you're looking for and they send you an email and they get them. Yeah. What's a Geek Pro camera? Don't know what it is. What's this? Who got that? Geek Pro camera? Amy, you know her friend Kim that just got married? Oh, it's just, it's a, what do you call it? Like what? a GoPro? GoPro. She probably wrote Geek Pro. Oh. Uh, she, um, that was nice to her. She sent them a camera for their, what, they're on their honeymoon? Yeah. She sent it to their hotel so it would be there waiting for them for their to film their trip. If a guy sent a married couple <laughs> camera news on their honeymoon. We know weird. what would happen. It would be weird. But it's from Amy. She had a baby. I know, I heard. Where'd she have a baby? It worked. I, I don't know who gave her a baby, number one. What baby? When she says, I held a baby this week. Oh, no, I thought she said, I had a baby this week, and I said, where? In the bathroom at work? No! <laughs> she says she held one because, it, oh, oh. as everyone knows, Amy doesn't, isn't fond of children or really has no intentions to ever have any. So someone, her actually holding a baby is like a Did she to listen see. to our podcast? Huh? Did she listen to our podcast? No. Mm-hmm. She still has a BlackBerry Crackberry phone. She refuses. No, She's she like doesn't. you. She doesn't want technology. She has a computer. She can listen to it through a computer. She wouldn't. So if I say something like, well, she doesn't have having a baby on her vision board. <laughs> yeah, she'll never hear it. <laughs> okay. When you first started living with her, I was like, every time I'd leave, I'd look at the, the, vision do- board. I'd see the vision board in the back of the door, and I'd be like, Cause you guys kept the door open a lot. And at first I thought it was to cool the apartment. I not realized it was so I wouldn't see the vision board. It wasn't question. my vision board. I don't know. You're my vision board. Like Amy's like, my goals. I put, I stick things all over you, and that's my vision. Amy puts up her things to do on the mirror. She probably learned it in college. I thought maybe. It's like a pep talk thing I thought maybe herself. it was an American Eagle thing. No. It was like something American Eagle or something. The funny part is, this is something she came up with. She we were not forced to make vision boards, let me make this clear. No. This was, that's why it was even funnier, because I was like, how the fuck do you have that? I thought maybe it was like a vision board thing. No. So kind of like you know. Shall I be on my vision board? What? Rainbows. Uh, About twenty pictures of you. Mm-hmm. Twenty pictures of Ange. Yeah. <laughs> Fifty pictures of other babies. <laughs> That's my vision. Cat's husband and rainbows. You know what? This episode is being recorded tomorrow. What? When you're at the store. Yeah. Get a thing of cat food for your birthday boy. Oh yes, Norris. Norris is 15 today. That does think he gets a special meal. Yeah. Yeah. He's 15 years old. It had since he was Teen. three months. Teen got steak on his birthday. Norris can't eat steak. No, he... That would just get hacked up everywhere. <laughs> he just has little tiny f- purple fangs. Yeah, he gets little food. Yeah, I'll get, like, those filet bags. She- Sheba bag. Yeah. 
It's nice. He's 15. Prime's lies and he can eat up here by himself, so no one attacks yeah, him. Yeah, that'd be nice for him. Maybe he can take his collar off or he die. Maybe he should just take it off. No, he has a naked neck. Anyway. There's a reason why it's naked. Because that's he's losing his fur as it is. All that's doing is pulling on it. I like, the way, I like the way he looks. Can I just get him a necklace instead? No, he doesn't need that. I'll get him a soft collar instead. No, no, he's fine. Because that one's hard. He's fine as is. He said, I've been doing this for 15 years. I don't want to change. It's like his father. We're both pig-headed. I know. You know how, but when he tries to talk to you, do you know what you hear? He's a wizard. This will all be edited off. No, it's not. I want to listen to this for sure. <laughs> Well, thanks for listening. If you have a comment that you'd like to make about one of our or cats. Or if you want to wish Schnorris a happy birthday. Wish Schnorris a happy birthday. Um, He's a money on area. You can reach us at uh, bnsaboutmovies at gmail.com. If you're listening to this through YouTube, leave a comment on YouTube. If you're listening to it through Podomatic, leave a message on Podomatic. If you're listening to it in iTunes, go back and use the email. Have we had any messages on YouTube? Not a single so I should leave some. Not a separate message. So I should make up a fake email and leave some for you. I saw the saddest thing today. Why? Well, not sad because I don't like him, but whatever. Okay. Kevin Smith's daughter's seventeen now. The uh, dogma guy. Yeah. Yeah. His daughter's name is Harley Quinn. Is his name Harley Quinn Smith? How Harley. is she seventeen? Where have I been? He married her. His his wife was a USA Today reporter that interviewed him way back in the day, like when he did. Chasing Amy, I think. Mm. Like, right when he had broken up with Joey Warren Adams. He was dating her? Yeah. Out of his league. He did it. Okay. Remember the house when you were a director and they were in your movie? Yeah, some and, money and then. Yeah. yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe they, maybe it was good. I mean, you're out of my league. Yeah. So, anyway, Kevin Smith was, uh, uh, said his daughter put up a picture on Instagram, just like, it's like a selfie. Yeah. Every time she does, like, tons of movie dudes just leave her shitty messages. And there's one that says, you should kill yourself, you fucking cunt. Because, hey, because, you're, who her dad because is? your dad makes the shittiest movies and he thinks he's making The Matrix. And all he makes is a bunch of movies with dick jokes. I wish he'd been an abortion. All this stuff he wrote. And he's like, you know what? He goes, that's crazy. He goes, because she has nothing to do with this. How would you even know her? So she's like, well, I just blocked the guy. And she said, I think it's funny. She's like, to have that much free time and that small of a dick to write uh-huh. stuff like that. She's like, so whatever. He goes, I don't think it's that funny. He's Your like, but, yeah. He's like, but you know what? He goes, that takes a lot of energy. To do that and to have that much, he goes, "Why don't you make something? Like yeah. make something of your own. Go out and do something. Exactly. Instead of and I was like, you know what? I usually don't like him, but I was like, I could agree with that. I say that about certain people all the time. If you put the amount, I, I bitch a lot, but I also put a lot of time into making. My baby stuff. does lots of work. I put my like I used to bitch more, work less. <laughs> I think my complaining is artistic. It is. Very well thought out. <laughs> it's well thought out. There's character work. There's yeah. there's repetition of elements. There's handwork. There's handwork. Yep. Yeah. I think I think I bring complaining to just a certain edge. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty happy with it. You have Nothing to complain about. You know, I realize I'm glad we're doing a couple movies we like because like the last couple movies, yeah, we've disliked all of them. What do you mean? Oh, like lights out. Lights out. Uh, We're not even uh, doing one on Sausage Party. Uh, we should totally do one. No. Want to do a mini ep? No. Sausage Party mini episode. Done and over. It sucked. I would give that movie an F. Did you? So you want to hear the crazy story about Sausage Party? Let me read you this. This is this is perhaps more interesting than the actual movie itself. Mm-hmm. So. I was on Super Punch today. It's a okay. it's a blog aggregator. I go there a lot, get a lot of like comic book and movie news and stuff. It's a lot of what? A blog aggregator. What's an aggregator? It takes like other stories that you might have missed and puts them all on it. So anyway, the directors of Sausage Party did an interview, mm-hmm. and they said the production of the film was only twenty million dollars. Is that accurate? Because it sounds extremely low for a film with this level of production value. If it's accurate, how are you able to achieve that quality? So the guy, um, 
from the uh, company. Yeah. The the uh, animation company that did it. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, you know, we can't confirm or deny the official figure. We can say that when the movie was pitched to us, we made a pact and a vow, and uh, that we wanted to deliver a movie that looked like it was $150 million for a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. uh, they said, after working in L.A. for so many years, we saw so much money get thrown away, so we decided if we did this with a small, determined crew, we could do it. Let's just say it was lower budget. Mm -hmm. Well, after that, all the animators that worked there yeah. started firing back responses to the guy. Oh. So the production costs were kept low because they demanded that people work overtime for free. Mm -hmm. If you couldn't work late for free, your work would be assigned to someone else. Some artists were even threatened with termination for not staying late. The animation department signed a petition for better treatment and paid overtime. The letter had to go the whole way to Seth Rogen and them before they stepped in and saw that the artists were paid. Over 30 animators had left during the course of production due to stress. Most of them left before the paid overtime was implemented. This was met with animosity and was taken as a personal insult. Their names were omitted from the final credits, despite working for a year on the mm -hmm. film. Almost half the animation team is not credited. The team believed in this film and poured their hearts and souls into it. Despite this, more than half the people are not listed. Uh, they've added their credits to IMDb, and IMDb is listing them. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, there's 83 people, and some are missing because they just can't find them because they either quit the industry or they went to other places. Yeah. The film's credit only has 47 animators listed. Is that crazy? Yes. So, anyways, that's what happens. Like, that's the hard part. I'm not going to say that movie's art, but the people that worked in the animation studio, certainly. Like, it, I can't, the one thing I can't complain about Sausage Party was the animation wasn't bad. It looked like a Looks like a Pixar movie. Yeah, I mean, it was well animated. Yeah. And uh, there are some funny animation parts in it and some some neat stuff in that. I mean, it was all wasted. Yeah. But um, the problem is, and this works in advertising and wrestling and music and, and any art, is that you love what you do. Yeah. And you're going to put 100% more than that effort. You're going to work overtime. You're going to do all this stuff for free. Yeah. yeah. But in a perfect world, that yeah. would be recognized. Do you know what I mean? And, and the people, the, really the people that something. did that would say something or, mm -hmm. or care about it. And most, I'm here to say most of the time, it's not. Yeah. Well, thanks for listening to another episode. I don't know how this will end up. Some editing at the end there. Mm -hmm. You should, you should email us and say, I wonder what Sam and Becca were talking about. Mostly it was what Sam was blabbing about that needed to get edited. If you win, we'll give you one of our many copies of Poltergeist 2. Yeah. <laughs> we bought Poltergeist 2. Sam will we? sign it, too. I'll sign it, Gertie. Gertie. <laughs> Isn't that the girl from E.T.? Yeah. yeah the most Steven Spielberg movies. Carol Ann. <laughs> Carol Ann. Yes. Thanks for listening. Thank you. We'll see you at the movies.